China and as we all know that every moment is priceless and we want to cherish everything with no further presentation Ladislaw Horky with an awesome base 3D strip map of Earth presentation so, please okay. hello good to have you all here uh, so I'm going to talk about how to make an OSM-based 3D street map of Earth uh, using uh, some FOSS technology. So uh, I'm from Malone Technologies, uh, which is company, basically we develop software uh, in uh, 3D mapping business. We have one uh, main project, which is uh, our computer vision and deep learning driven reality capture called Vatstena which basically uh, takes aerial imagery, uh, transform them, transforms them uh, using classical photogrammetry uh, to some, say, geometric reality. And increasingly, we use more and more machine learning to transform this geometric reality into semantic reality. So if you've been to uh, this earlier, earlier talk this day here about the, the 3D buildings in Netherlands, so that might be something similar, just with different approach. Uh, and uh, we have a complementary project. This one is closed source. This is our main business. And we have uh, a complementary open source project, which is VTS Geospatial. And it's basically a framework or a system uh, for 3D data fusion and virtual landscape streaming and rendering. It basically takes all these 3D models, uh, much more uh, DEMs, orthophotos, uh, vector data, which will be the, the theme of this talk. You all put this all into the VTS Geospatial, which manages the data, fuses them together and streams them to various uh, clients across form factors and platforms. Uh, we have also, basically we have uh, WebGL based uh, or JavaScript WebGL based uh, web client. We have C++ client for desktop. We have also a uh, very nice plugin for Unity, which is gaining some speed lately. Um, yeah, so that's basically VTS Geospatial. And with just a short stop with the buildings, so probably we'll implement some uh, some very interesting new format to basically stream the semantic buildings to the front end. So that's, that's somehow an outlook uh, where, uh, in which direction we are going. So uh, what are the applications of, of the VTS Geospatial? So it's VR and AR. So imagine you can write an app. When you look out, uh, out, of, the, out of this very window with your mobile phone, you will see like the street names or, or uh, important buildings and so on. So that's, that's one of the apps you can write with VTS, for example. Uh, it's good for interactive simulations, gaming, that's the Unity plugin, for example. And of course, uh, 3D Geospatial and uh, 3D geospatial mapping. So what we are going to talk about now, uh, we'll take a look at uh, current state of uh, global 3D maps. So what's the status now? Uh, how to set up an open uh, OSM-based 3D street map using VTS geospatial. And we will take a glimpse uh, on how to style your 3D street map. If you find the last part a bit over the top, don't worry, everything is on GitHub, you just need to fork a repo, you'll get the whole web page and web application running with just one fork. So it's pretty easy to, to do. So yeah, I'll just wait a minute so the people can sit down and... It was the group photo, wasn't it? <laughs> cool. Yeah, so you basically just missed everything important. No. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at current uh, state of global 3D street map. So basically you all know this. You, there's a good chance you use it every day. So that's uh, probably the only true vector, true 3D street map uh, you may know apart from, I don't know if there are any more implementations. So, uh, so this is basically what you know, Google Maps. Uh, when you use it, you probably also know uh, the downsides or, or the limitations or the issues. So Google Maps is mainly a navigation service, basically. So uh, the, the map data in there, it's basically a roadmap. There are not many topographic features and so on. 
Uh, it's proprietary data, you don't get access to them. It's based on closed source technology, so you d don't even get access to the engine. And it can be a bit underwhelming in some regions. If you were to last year's Phosphor G in Dar es Salaam, you may remember there was uh, some projects regarding this particular village. So this is uh, Zeze village in rural Tanzania, uh, depicted on Google Maps base map, which is great. You can see nothing, basically. Uh, so there's no, no useful map information whatsoever, but when you look at the same place on the open street map, it's pretty rich. So you get streets, you get, uh, you get uh, features, uh, street names, and so on. And so yeah, why doesn't Google uh, use OpenStreetMap? Basically, or when, when will Google mirror this information? We have no way to push it, basically. It's, it's all Google's matter, so uh, we need some open source approach when we want to visualize these kind of data. Uh, the consequences of, of Basically, this uh, this approach is you have many uh, mapping projects around the world that rely on open uh, on FOSS technology and open data to achieve their goals. For example, they mentioned Crowd2 maps that maps rural Tanzania uh, with some uh, high goals like uh, helping to end uh, female uh, genital mutilation and to aid community devel development. So these are pretty pretty nice goals. So. As usual, the FOSS and uh, open data are the answer. Uh, basically, now we have all the ingredients we need for FOSS, fully FOSS 3D street map. We have the open street map, that's the like, data base. Uh, we have uh, FOSS tools to, uh, to tile or take care of this data, open map tiles. We have uh, global DEMs, we have global uh, satellite mosaic, e.g. Sentinel cloudless imagery. And we have VTS Geospatial, which is an interactive multi-resolution 3D globe streaming platform which can take care of the visualization part. So this is how uh, kind of uh, Google-ish look, style may look like in VTS. So uh, you see the zoom in, you see the streets or the, the highways appear first. Uh, nice soft soft styling you can see the streets appear uh, when we zoom in you see more labels you see street labels finally uh, and you, as, as i said you can even add your own 3d to the map and if you look carefully you may guess where uh, phosphor g north america took place this year uh, so yeah that's basically uh, what you can get Plus, we have solved all these like crossing issues already, so this is kind of obsolete. Uh, so, how to set up an OSM-based 3D street map using the VTS Geospatial? Uh, so, we have two basic ingredients: this data and software. So, for the data, we will need a global DEM, uh, either like all are kind of open. Aster SRTM, uh, we picked the viewfinder panoramas, which is the most global and most complete data set, uh, crafted by Jonathan De Ferranti, I think. Yeah, Jonathan De Ferranti. Uh, I don't know the nationality of the guy. British, British geographer. So that he made hell of a job. It's a very nice data set. Uh, we'll need a global imagery. You can, with VTS Geospatial, you can use bulk imagery locally or you can use imagery provided by TMS, WMS, WMTS. Here we used uh, the Sentinel 2 cloudless like bulk imagery by the EOX. And we will, of course, need the OSM data, uh, specifically an MVT service on top of uh, OSM data, where we used. Uh, the MapTiler MVT uh, or MVT service from MapTiler Cloud. And regarding software, you will need the VTS Geospatial, which is a VTS backend. Uh, it's nicely installable using single Debian package, so it's very easy to start with. There are many tutorials on the web uh, how you can uh, basically make it running. Uh, it consists mainly of uh, two servers. Uh, one is VTS Map Proxy. Just a note: there is a there is a uh, 
extra talk just on this uh, very nice server uh, tomorrow, I think, at 11. Uh, Andre is having it in operator room. Uh, basically, map proxy uh, is sort of the map proxy you may know, but it's just the VTS map proxy. It takes, uh, takes uh, the raster data or the vector data and dynamically converts them into resources usable in VTS, which are called uh, like surfaces for terrains and meshes and so on, bound layers for imagery, and free layers basically here for vectors. So that's it's a it's a very nice very nice server. If you want to know more about it tomorrow, talk. Uh, maybe you may want to reserve a spot for that. Uh, and then you we have the VTS just uh, VTS VTSD, uh, which basically serves all the static data. So if you have like three D models in in your configuration. It will serve those. Uh, in our case here, when we have just the globe and the vectors, it will just serve like the map configuration. It's basically a configuration file you write uh, where you specify which layers uh, should be displayed, how should they be displayed together. And of course, uh, you don't only need the back end, you also need the front end. Uh, where you can choose between uh, the VTS browser JS, which is the web client uh, written in JavaScript, and uh, using the WebGL, uh, which we will use and which is used in GitHub if you fork the repo, uh, or you can you can go for VTS browser CPP that works for desktop. There's some sample application written for that already. So uh, the easiest way, as I said, is just uh, fork this repository on GitHub. We'll probably have some time to have a look how it looks. Uh, it's it's very simple. Basically, you, you can fork it and then you can just... Everything is explained there. There are some sample files. You can try your styling or base, uh, like your further work in styling of those files. Uh, like you can piggyback on them. So uh, let's have a look at the repo, probably. So how the style, first how the styling works, basically some theory. So uh, we use uh, some Carter CSS or Mapbox inspired styling language that was widely expanded for the purposes of 3D. Uh, the styles are stored as a JSON. It's property driven styling. So for example, you can you can you can make the style change based on like peak height height or something like that. Uh, and there's lots of cartography oriented functionality. As I said, the repository contains some predefined styles, uh, which you can start with. Uh, so uh, the, the predefined fi files or styles basically, dis uh, basically show how to display lines, how to do some filtering in the OSM data, how to like draw lines with outlines, that there are some functions you can use, that you can use inheritance in the styles, how to display labels, and there is some uh, short mention of visual hierarchies. So let's have a look uh, at the live demo. I'll probably just browse that. I'm not sure how much time I have left. Seven minutes, that's cool. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So, if we go to the GitHub, so this is this is the repository. You have like nice tutorial uh, how to work with the repo, uh, or how to set up your own VTS backend instance, what could inf what configuration file to put where, and so on. So this is pretty straightforward tutorial. And here you have basically self-contained website running on GitHub pages where it's like the, the last full-fledged style. I already zoomed to Bucharest in different tabs, so let's see how it looks. So, for example, now you already have those uh, very nice like dynamic street labels. So you can see the, uh, the street, the labels actually like crawl uh, on the streets, follow, follow their shape, which is kind of nice functionality. So yes, and if you are going to play with styles, uh, there's also some like magic uh, keyboard shortcuts how to edit the style. They are described in the repo. 
so we can try how uh, some of the sample files look like when you like use this style so I'm going to open the style editor yeah, which is here and I'm going to open one of the sample styles so let's look some simple one if the internet allows yeah so let's just have a look how to display basically all lines so it's very simple of course because it's because it's very simple so just copy this and put it into the style editor and update the style and basically it only says uh, I'll use like one layer this basically are arbitrary names uh, it says just display if it's line feature display it and uh, somehow make it vi slightly visible through the terrain if it's hidden by the terrain so now we get all the lines that are coming from the server so you see on the lower LODs is just state borders when you get closer it's like the major roads when you get much more closer it's it's much more roads and basically you can start to build on top of that there is a whole documentation how the styling works which is I don't know, which is here basically this is styling reference link to our to another github repository we can have a look at more some more styles i think so there is some like how some basic filtering works so let's put it in there so basically it just says uh, again let all the lines displayed just for context and add some extra layer which is motorway and basically it says display only uh, features that match match uh, the following filter it's all it has basically the group equals the group is transform uh, transportation and the class is in motorway uh, and all those uh, all those uh, conditions have to be fulfilled so it's kind of if you know the, the buffer like syntax for conditions so this is this is similar approach and again if it's line display it make it a little bit wide, wider and yellowish color so let's see how it looks like and we should see some highways yeah and we got some highways here So basically, yeah, you can work from that. I can uh, look into some more styles. Uh, here is how you can draw outlines. Basically, you draw the line uh, two times with some different parameters. You may notice that many of the parameters are the same. Uh, so there is think you can do like inher inheritance in the styles so you can uh, you can make like motorway base and then motorway outline which inherits the base and just changes a few parameters so yeah <clears throat> that's about it and it gets more and more complicated as you basically wish and uh, uh, depending on what you want to achieve yeah i think i can turn this on again Okay, and uh, I think I'm pretty much finished. So, if there are any questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Let's have a round of applause for Vladislav. Thank you. <laughs> Five minutes of questions, so don't be shy. <laughs> Since I beat, beat them to ground with all the technical stuff in the end. That's yeah, usual. Okay. 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 Uh, where is the OpenStreetMap saved? It's a PostgreSQL database as usual, or where are the vector data saved? Yeah. 
Uh, so the question was uh, where uh, the OSM data are kept in this case. In this case, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So in this case, we are uh, we are not using uh, the raw OpenStreetMap data. We are using already a service built on top of them, uh, the Map Mapbox Vector Tiles service, which is streamed from MapTiler uh, in this case. But otherwise, yeah. Basically, uh, what what do you own? So far, you need the, the MVT service, but there are open source tools, so you can basically build it on top of your own clone of OSM database with open source tools, so it still counts as open source, I would say. Other questions? Okay, perfect. Format. So the question was if the data format is JSON or another format. You mean for uh, for the vector data? Mm, the map proxy can, can consume a shape file too. Basically, the map proxy uh, regarding the vector data it can consume any OGR readable format. So you can go with uh, with shape file, with geo package, with even with CSV. I think. Uh, so, but but what what gets streamed actually to the front end to the browser? It's sort of GeoJSON. Basically, Map Proxy translate translates everything into some sort of GeoJSON that's that's streamed to the front. Uh, no, you know, uh, you would have to write like your own application based on that. But yeah. The data, the, the data are coming from the server. You have to put them on the server. Uh, it's not like drag and drop in the browser. But I think the browser uh, supports basically a native GeoJSON. So it has like the, this. It's not like drag and drop, but the API has a function like load GeoJSON. So you can just yeah. You mentioned uh, that the tiling you should do by by ourselves. Is there any plans to do some kind of uh, tiling cache or to make them available, same as there's tile for OSM? So the question was uh, if you can, if we can do our tiling, or In, instead of every each of one of us do his own tiling, is there a way to get a cache tiling from OSM? Uh, is uh, there a central infrastructure, S the similar way you can get two D tiles from OSM? Uh, basically, uh, it's it's basically using two D tiles. So uh, maybe what what was not clear uh, what Map Proxy does it gets it gets normal uh, Mapbox vector tiles like 2D vector tiles you you would get from any service that supports MVT and it takes uh, like global terrain and basically height codes all the features with the height from the from the DEM so it basically works for uh, works with with usual uh, 2D tiled uh, 2D tiled vector data so if this answer your uh, answers your question like we don't do the tiling ourselves uh, but there are many services that already uh, offer like 2D tiling of vector data Okay, so two D tiling plus height information and not three D tiles. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's not it's not like the cesium three D tiles. Okay. No, it, it's Th just that's, the, that's a uh, good point. Yeah, it's it's just three D information contained in the tiles. Thank you. Somebody else? Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ladislav. Yeah, thank you. And we're gonna have seven minutes of break.